check this out, man. Talk yeah. about new tech. Pilots use new sensors to max out human performance. So the Air Force F-16 pilots are testing out these new sensors. So they're going to monitor you. Um, integrated cockpit sensing system, which gets your, you know, you're an astronaut, dude. Your oxygen level, your heart rate, your breathing rate, your skin temperature, and other markers that show how their bodies are faring in flight. We wanted to be able to help the ICS team accelerate their technology through flight tests, says we fug Lee. Wait. <laughs> yes. Way fugly. Way fugly. <laughs> Did they just <laughs> ah, he's from the bayou? <laughs> you can't pronounce. <laughs> The goal is to demonstrate the ICS's ability to measure physio and environmental data and assess its utility in recognizing physiological insults. <laughs> Dude, this, contrary really? to popular belief, is a sport in all the sense of the physicality of the word, says Captain Travis Warden. He didn't have a call sign. Oh, boy. In the Hazard Lee uh, Fat Amy video, under G-forces and mental focus of dogfight training, my heart rate is going to increase, my body bodily response and my temporal distortion is going to increase, and you're going to see how much more difficult it becomes for me to think, talk, and communicate. Indeed. His, what, dude, his heart rate averages 50 beats per minute at rest. It's pretty good. Dude's a runner. His G-tolerance must be pretty crappy. But it rose to around 120 during takeoff and spiked to nearly 160 during defensive BFM. Had no idea what our heart rates are like. Just 120, and you're taking off. Hmm. That uh, seems awfully high you're... just for regular takeoff. It's because you're single engine. Heart rate's always, <laughs> ele <laughs> always elevated. No, you got to include the rocket motor in the seat. You always got to. Yeah. Well, so jet pilots across the military have a long struggle with hypoxia, dehydration, mm -hmm. temporal distortion, mental exhaustion, spatial disorientation, hyperventilation. Wow, that's a new one. Uh, wide range because we talked we did a whole thing on physiological effects we talked about g-forces with the flight dock we talked about uh, hypoxia mm -hmm. um it said made finding root causes extraordinarily challenging but with this they can uh one symptom of hypoxia the sense of euphoria but we do that we do that with robd you know yep. so this explains that for once these low-cost innovations and they i mean that's good that's great i would wonder or worry that you find something you weren't looking for. You know, anytime you get attached to something and they're like, hey, yeah. hey you got a heart murmur. What? Get this stuff yeah. off me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, but they're talking about how to recognize incapacitated pilots and they might be able to integrate it with auto GCAS, which is pretty cool. Uh, but this is what it is it's got real time monitoring, uh, auction sat your three axis acceleration, your cabin altitude, heart rate, respiratory rate, core body temperature. So they know if you've got, we don't, do we still talk about the, uh, the virus, if you will, is that still a thing? <laughs> Could have told, told way before though, uh, humidity, oxygen. Uh, it's got all this stuff, like a bunch of stuff. <sighs> Dude. It's that, it's like that scene in Apollo 13. It's like, get this crap off me. You know, like, I don't, well, yeah, want... but, but it says the human performance sensing system can also make pilots fly better. Data showed that his oxygen levels in his brain drop more than expected, which could indicate he needs to improve his G strain. Well, I yeah, used, he... We used to know because the lights would go out. That's now, yeah. Yeah, he he like like a man. Yeah. yeah. It's like... <laughs> Gray yeah. out like everybody else. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're going to max perform humans. I want all the insights and assistance possible. Nothing's off the table. Uh, holy crap. I know this guy. Who? Alex Goldberg. He's a lieutenant colonel now. He was a casual lieutenant when I was in the, in the B course. Oh, man. Look at that. Look look what you could have been. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's hypoxic situation. Maybe it's gray lock or G lock. Gray lock vision based off the what's happening in our bodies we have actual monitoring us yeah the only thing i like about this gonky is the oh, why do i keep doing that uh the it can recognize and maybe integrate something for physiological episodes like hypoxia or g lock the other stuff eh. and even even then because people, every time I do a video about drones, they're like, why do we take the human out? Because humans can't pull Gs. First of all, a lot of aircraft are limited by the airframe, not the pilot. 
right? A lot of 9G jets are 9G jets, not 9G humans. Now, could you argue that they could pull more Gs as a drone? Probably. But in the age of missiles, do you need to? Uh, remains to be seen. So I just, I don't know. Is it too little too late? What, for all this human performance stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just think, uh, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, we're like, we were joking about it. It's like, hey, man, you, you almost blacked out. Yeah, I know. How do you know? Well, because I lost my vision, you know, or I, I, I guess, it, 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 I, I don't know. Man. There's a lot of data collection going on, even with the modern, like, I remember you, know, you I went to the Hornet and the thing would it tell on you. The Super Hornet was even worse. Like, you can't hide anything in the Super Hornet. Right. So if like if you came into the break way too fast, you know, they could just pull the data from the airplane. You know, I would, I, you know, I've gotten phone calls before. Uh, I, was, I remember I was driving home and they're like, hey, sir, uh, you know exactly where you were when that thing fell off your jet? I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, yeah, it popped the code. And when you came back, this uh, panel was, I'm like, no, you know. And then another time I came back and the, I'm getting ready to walk out of maintenance and they're like, Hey, uh, you know, did you notice any other, uh, engine issues when you had that engine stall? I'm like, I didn't have an engine stall. He's like, well, yeah, you did right here. You know, he's like to the exact second, Oh yeah, right? <laughs> to the exact second. I'm like, yeah. Dude, I, I thought that was the center line tank empty kicking me in the, well, in the you, floor, but you, you know, know what the, I'm saying? You know, the Eagle guys will make people keep wearing it. The debrief. Because <laughs> they'll watch the heart watch the rate heart rate. And be like you're lying. <laughs> That's right. You, you didn't have a valid shot there. Yeah. I see your heart rate going up. You're yeah. lying. Well, yeah. Now they'll be able to get the jet data, match it with your physiological data, and be like, no, he's clearly lying. Yeah. You know? What is what is what is happening here at time three fifty five, sir? Yeah. I was being. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's a half a G, trying. half a G, <laughs> and a shallow left hand. Yeah. Turn. Why are you? <laughs> yeah, where were you going right there, sir? I was in the middle of a physiological event. I don't know, man. I, I guess I'm old school. Like, get yeah. the hell out of my jet. <laughs> well, but, I mean, it's not. I don't think it's that much of a a leap there when you know you start with, with this, and the next thing is neural. You know, because now we want to see what the brainwave activity is, and now we want to see. You know, okay. Well, I mean, if this is one-off studies, like, hey, we're going to do a series of two weeks of flying with the stuff hooked up to you to learn. I'm all for it. But to like data gather every like, if they could somehow put this stuff in your gear and it would just it wasn't uh, your gear. Yeah, it wasn't the gear. Okay, uh, to hall monitor you like all the time. I'm. Dude, well, like it could have been used. I mean, that would have been, I mean, that's almost how they were doing it with the Raptor. Remember when the Raptor was having the, the, uh, Obox issues yeah. and they found it, it was like a piece of their gear that was constricting. And that's why they were kind of feeling that hypoxia and all that stuff. But they ended up having like pulse ox and they had to go fly with this. Cause if it got too high, you know, they had to come back. So there are scenarios where it is perfectly valid. And I agree with you. If it's data, and human factors, and it's just the limited to the 422 and the test folks. Let them have it. Especially, you know, I of all people believe that, you know, if it could, could have saved my buddy's life. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, it's not, is it, it's not practical every day and you don't need it every day. You know, you don't, you're not out there pulling nine G's. You are an athlete, but you're an athlete a couple times a month usually you know you've got other missions you're doing or if you do phase-based training or whatever you know one month out of you know the last three months you're doing bfm the rest of the time you're out there doing something else oh dude and you know like the air force would be like well in order to be bfm qualified your heart rate can be i mean like i could just see an entire laundry list of oh dude like stuff and it's like you know sometimes man data doesn't match reality i'm sorry <laughs> so i don't i don't know I'm all well, for it, you know, for testing and 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 safety and stuff. But I, I am against it. You know, I don't ever want a camera following me around all the time. Not because I'm doing anything wrong. I just don't want the camera following me. But I, I just I mean, that guy's vitals, you know, 50 resting heart rate. He's having he is a runner and his G tolerance is not going to be the smoker with the 70 resting heart rate whose yes. blood pressure is much higher. So just yeah. different. 